Most people know that a home charger for an electric vehicle, well, it goes from your house or the grid to the car. Vehicle to grid is essentially reversing that. It goes from the car back to your house or the grid. Essentially, it's a home storage battery with wheels. Now, there's a lot of people I've spoken to over the years who have said, well, I'm kind of waiting for vehicle to grid. That's going to be the big game changer. That's going to be the future. I've already got a battery on my driveway or in my garage. I want to make use of it. But for me, this isn't the silver bullet a lot of people think it will be. It's going to be around. It's going to be part of the mix. I'm very much in favour of vehicle to grid coming to market. I just see it as a, a side dish at best. It's poppadoms with a curry. Prawn crackers with a Chinese. So it will be here, it will have some usage, maybe bonus usage. But again, I don't think it's something that's going to be that effective in what people think it will do. Vehicle to grid's been around a long time in terms of it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. There's an article I read yesterday in research for this video that said, well, the headline was, when is vehicle to grid coming? Why are we waiting so long for V2G to appear? That article was written in 2018, six years ago. So six years ago, they were saying, why is it taking so long? Six years later, now, nothing has turned up. There's, there's no market out there for vehicle to grid chargers yet i'm sure it will happen it's just i don't see it being a big thing because home battery systems which are there 365 days a year 24 hours a day installed in your house have got to the point where they're well there's billions on the market five years ago they didn't really exist there's a few and now there's loads vehicle to grid the only charger I can find at the moment is one that costs around £4,000 before you even look at installation. So it's not a case of you just get a charger and replace the one you've got with a vehicle to grid version. It's a lot more complicated than that. You need MCS approval, almost certainly, because like a home battery, you can export. You will, again, almost certainly need something like a G99 approval from your local network operator, the Northern Power Grid, in my case. So it's like getting solar panels or a home battery system. You have to get all that done and all the paperwork approved and it's not you know, insurmountable, it's quite common, but it's not just whacking a charger on the wall and thinking that the electricity goes both ways. For you to benefit, like charge at night when it's cheap and power the house through the day when it's at peak rates, well, the car has to be here. If I take average Joe UK working person someone who may have an electric vehicle. They're probably not going to be in during the day. In fact, they're probably going to be back at what, half past five-ish, which is the bulk of the peak electricity usage already gone. If it's not there at night for whatever reason, you can't charge up when it's cheap. Effectively, I'm picking little things here. I'm creating problems, but you can see why it's diminishing the amount of people this makes sense to. It's, uh, it's return, it's payback, it's money saving ability is far less than a proper home battery. And when you consider that the installation of a vehicle to grid charger, even in the future, is probably going to be about the same as a home battery system, I just don't see the point of it. Battery systems are going to get cheaper as time goes on, just as they have done with electric vehicles and various other things. Right now, I can get a 10 point, I think it's 10.4 kilowatt hour usable battery with a six kilowatt hybrid inverter for about 3,300 quid, which is cheaper than the only vehicle to grid charger that I can see existing right now. And that's excluding installation, I should point out, but you see my point. If you've got the option of a home battery system that's at least the same price or less, or even if it's a bit more, it makes more sense to get that over using a vehicle to grid solution because it will uh, save you a lot more money a lot faster. Octopus Energy, they're very good at these sort of new different tariffs. As far as I can tell, they're, well, they, they were the first, maybe only vehicle to grid tariff that exists. That requires you as part of their terms and conditions, and it makes sense obviously for them to do this, but that requires you to have the vehicle plugged in for at least 12 hours every couple of days. 
you can skip the odd one, but if you don't do that often enough, then they move you off the tariff because the car has to be here for it to, to have the battery capabilities. It used to exist as a thing did vehicle to grid. It used to be a thing where you go, well, again, I've got this big battery. Why don't I use it? But when I can get a cheaper static battery that's always there, it kind of makes this not useless, but not really relevant because it's not going to save me anywhere near as much money. As I said, it's going to be more of a hassle to run because you have to plug it in. How many arguments is that going to create? Have you plugged the car in? No, no, well, it's got loads of charge. I don't need to charge that for a few days. Yeah, but it needs to be plugged in for the house to be powered. No, you've just cost me another pound. <laughs> it will happen. You know what people are like with graphs. I'm the same. Did you plug it in last night? No. Oh, damn. I read a study that essentially said that a lot of um, folks that were, were asked about this said that they don't like the idea of being out of control of their product, that that could discharge to the grid, which will save them money, but there's a... There's a misconception out there that you're going to suddenly turn up to your car and it's going to be empty because it's just dumped all its battery to the grid for reasons that you know we're talking about here to, to offset the peak usage and so forth. I mean, it would never be like that. That is, again, a misconception. But people don't like something out of their control that it's going to charge when it feels like it, even if it is a tiny amount. So it's essentially fixing a problem that either doesn't exist anymore or certainly won't do in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. I'm sure the vehicle to grid will get a lot cheaper than that as a hardware solution, but not really to the point of being so much cheaper than a home battery system that it actually makes sense. Because again, the payback of the static solution is far, far higher because it's there all the time. There's another huge reason as well, and this is probably part of why it's taken so long to get anything out today. I mean, let's face it, the only vehicle to grid stuff you've probably heard about are trials. There's nothing out there right now. Even though it's been a, a, a thing, a product that's coming to market for probably seven or eight years, nothing's here. That tells me it's not needed. But it's the car manufacturers. Imagine you make a car. Uh, it's this one here. And it's got a 100,000 mile eight year warranty on the battery. But someone could do 20, 30% more uh, cycles, more usage on that battery with the car not moving. It'd be like having a petrol or diesel car that's just running on your driveway for a few hours at a time. It would increase the wear and tear on the battery, but the mileage wouldn't go up, which would make the manufacturer, BMW in this case, or Ford or Volkswagen or Tesla, very nervous because they're going, oh, hang on a minute, our battery is going to be used a lot more, but it's not moving. So they're going to have to change that. Maybe change it from 100,000 miles to however many thousand cycles which is again an added complexity for people buying a used car, but again, far from insurmountable. The general consensus from all the manufacturers I've spoken to over the years when doing press reviews and things like that, if I've spoken to one of their like high tech guys, it's essentially, we don't want this to be used as a static battery any more than you'd use a, a petrol engine as a generator. There are cars out there that are saying this is vehicle to grid ready. So it, it, again, it will become a thing. I'm not saying let's, Get rid of it, let's not do it at all. But it's gonna be a, a, an added bonus. It's not gonna be, again, this silver bullet that, that people hope it will be. That I've seen there's so many comments in my uh, various videos over the years that I'm waiting for vehicle to grid to, to come out, to, to sort itself out, to, to be cheap, whatever it is they're waiting for. I just, I, I'd stop waiting, quite frankly, because as I said, when you're reading an article that's six years old saying, how long is this gonna to take to come out? Not nothing has happened. The market has decided, nah. It's like wireless charging on a motorway. You've heard lots of things saying, well, we could put wireless charging on like one lane. So the car charges as it's going along the main roads and the battery only has to do the journeys in between, you know, up from the motorway to the town, then you use the wireless charging and so forth. I mean, forgetting the monumental infrastructure cost of that to, to be a thing. Battery technology means it's not, need, it's not needed, it's not necessary. I'm sure in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, or however long it's going to take, that we will end up with batteries charging in five minutes, that are using abundant, clean materials, and it's, they're going to be a lot cheaper, and we're going to get three, four, five hundred mile ranges from the cheapest vehicles. All the problems that exist with them right now will, will be solved with technology.
So the wireless charging solution is of its time. Just like I think vehicle to grid is of its time. Eight, nine, ten years ago when, you know, because Nissan have always had this, it's a Japanese requirement, I believe, of an electric vehicle as, a, as like an emergency backup. That's exactly it. It's a backup. It's an emergency thing. It's not a vehicle to grid home battery re replacement. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on the matter. Let me know what you think, because this does divide opinion on the videos that I've sort of mentioned this in the past. It will exist. I'm sure of that. It's just for me, I wouldn't bother waiting for it. I would, if you have a bit of money, spend it on those solutions, maybe solar panels. I'd, I'd, I'd do something else. That's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all the usual rubbish that YouTube channels throw at you. There's the second channel, Driving Home, and the membership's 99p. So if you want to become a member, help the channel out and get videos on Sunday instead of Friday, that'd be great. Uh, I'm done. Thanks for watching. See you soon.